The economic and political impact of oil in the Middle East since 1950 is an interesting topic and warrants great investigation. The Middle East is a rich and also troubled land with dictatorships and major economic uncertainty. This is a basic theme for all my sources. Since oil's discovery in the Middle East, the region has been ripe with economic and political instability. Robin Barlow, who is a professor of economics at the University of Michigan, says that the most accurate way to calculate GNP of different Middle Eastern countries is by using the repricing method. This involves using a collection of detailed prices and quantities from individual commodities from different countries and comparing them. Before the Arab-Israeli wars, Israel had a lack of economic growth because of two recessions which was caused by chronic inflation caused by war. But Iran, on the other hand, experienced amazing economic growth. Iran's oil revenues rose 64% from 1966 to 1968. These facts and figures showed the power of oil and the difference between one country with and one without. Gawad Bagat, who is a professor of National Security Affairs Universities, explains that in 1967, the Arab-Israeli War took place over the Sinai Peninsula. This is a result of Israel being a very energy-poor country surrounded by very energy-rich countries. Israel won the conflict and took control of the oil fields in the Sinai Peninsula. This made them self-sufficient in oil production and helped stabilize their economy. But this would only last a short amount of time because in 1973, Israel lost control of the oil fields in the Sinai Peninsula in a similar war. After this, Israel tried to diversify its energy sources. Israel could have great economic benefit if they could import resources from nearby countries, but tensions and conflicts in the region have put relations on hold. Simon Bromley, who is a senior lecturer at the University of Leeds, tells us that OPEC plays a major role in the oil growth in the Middle East. Created in 1960, it is an oil organization that represents many of the large oil producing countries in the Middle East. In terms of politics, countries refuse to do business with OPEC because private oil companies are considered more politically safe. He states that the Middle East accounts for 65% of proven oil reserves. This quote shows just the massive amount of oil that is in the Middle East, and also how much power OPEC has, representing many of the producing countries. Jim Hart is the manager of international relations of the U.S. Department of Energy, says that the mere threat of in the Gulf, much less actual conflict, can send oil prices soaring. This quote demonstrates the complete uncertainty and volatile nature of the Middle East oil economy. It has great influence over the world economy as well. Hart says that an increased reliance on Middle Eastern countries for oil production could cause major damage to the world economy. He states that the Gulf War of 1990 is a great example of this. Hart says the day after the Desert Storm assault began, prices plummeted $10.56 per barrel. This is the biggest market move in the history of modern oil. This gives us a great understanding of how uncertain the oil markets have been. Robert Bartsky and Lutz Killian are professors of economics at the University of Michigan. They state that increase in oil prices have been held responsible for recessions, periods of excessive inflation, reduced productivity, and lower economic growth. They also stated that stagflation, embargoes, and wars all played major parts in oil shocks in the Middle East. Michael L. Ross, who is a professor of political science at the University of California, says that his main idea is that oil-rich countries are much more likely to develop a dictatorship than a democracy. Ross says that this trend started in 1970 because he claims that most major oil companies started to dominate the market. Scholars refer to this as the oil curse. He says that oil wealth leads to corruption, instability, and war. One example is how Muammar al-Gaddafi nationalized the country's oil industry. This gave him the revenue to spend on his revolutionary ideas. Ross explains three ways that dictators stay in power by buying off citizens, low taxes, private budget, and military spending. Ross says that even if dictators were removed and replaced with democratic systems, they would likely fail due to previous administration's connections. He believes that the Middle East can change to democracy like Mexico, Nigeria, and others in recent history. Kevin K. Tsui, who is the Associate Professor of Economics at Clemson University, also talks about the effect of oil wealth on dictatorships. He estimates that discovering 100 billion barrels of oil will lower a country's dem democracy score by 20% below the existing trend. But for democratic countries, it has no effect. His view on the oil curse is that autocracy can be an economic success when it is able to remove someone from office that is not performing. His results show that oil wealth and democratic development are closely related. He also states that alternate energy will reduce demand for crude oil, therefore limiting profits for dictators. Donald L. Loesman, who is a professor of economics, explains the rentier state and national oil companies. He explains that the rentier states have little need to tax their people, 
This allows the government to act in a less constricted manner since the people have been essentially bought off by not paying taxes and also having government benefits. Since the country has no citizen input, this lets the government do whatever it wants, whenever it wants. National oil companies are a crucial tool that helps the current regime stay in power, but the state-run oil companies are very ineffective. The national oil company revenues get reduced by the country lowering it below market price for a certain country to buy. This acts like a form of state foreign policy. He also projects that Persian Gulf oil producing countries would need to reinvest $523 billion on new equipment in order to meet global demand by 2030. Richard Haas, who holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree from Oxford University and various other qualifications, makes him an expert on this subject. He calls the modern Middle East in its fifth era, which is explained by with Iran and Israel will become the two superpowers in the Middle East. He believes that Iran will rise and enjoy great wealth with major economic stability. Israel will be able to have an economy that can complete globally. Also, Israel holds the military power in the region, being the only country with a nuclear arsenal. This is a glimpse of the future and gives us some information on what might be next in this troubled region. In conclusion, my research shows that just how big a role the oil has played in the Middle East since 1950. Oil wealth has contributed to political and economic instability in this region, but there's no easy solution to the problems I've laid out. One potential solution I did find was that many rich and influential countries should stop buying oil from dictatorships in the Middle East and instead focus on alternative fuels and ways to help stabilize the region.